Hey guys, welcome back to the Festival Insider Podcast. I'm Emma Capotis. And I'm Michael Julian. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode. We are super excited to have you here. And um, MJ and I are chatting with a really exciting guest, um, Julian Prince, who is the founder of SXM Festival, which is an incredible like beach experience on the island of St. Martin. And they do a really great job of also organizing a sustainable event. So we're going to be chatting with him today about the whole festival, how he got here, what's up next for them. But um, yeah, anything else you want to add about Julian? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those festivals that's very important where we live because a lot of fans from New York and Miami go and it's kind of um, growing a little bit the techno tourism, which is, you know, a movement we obviously support and contribute to growth. And it's a big culture for us. So really appreciate it for what these guys have built and, you know, in the, for house music specifically, the lineups are just simply incredible. So it's a great experience, a very unique island. You know, I feel like I should start some of these episodes with funny stories because I always have mm-hmm. one and it's just, I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's no time to talk about it, but I have a really funny story with Julian. Like me and him, we've traveled to different festivals together. We've raved together all over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a really funny story that's probably worth mentioning. I invited Julian to come and uh, be a special guest um, and join us f- for Elro in New York, which was December 19 i think it was like a few years back mm-hmm. and then uh you know we text randomly all the time so we text him randomly and he said something about coming to new york so i was kind of excited and then uh i got a text from him saying hey i'm on a plane can you send me my hotel uh information and i'm like uh i, I thought maybe he is texting a wrong person yeah long story short when I invited him to the 19th of December, this is like probably August. He thought it was 19th of August and he flew from Montreal to Elro on 19th of whatever month. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) And it was so funny, but we got to spend the weekend together. It was, you know, it was a lot of fun for him, but very, very funny story. Yeah, yeah. Wow. confused, But he's such a great guy and so committed to, you know, house music and have such deep roots uh, in Mm -hmm. Montreal. Um, I can't wait to talk to him. Let's let's welcome him in. Awesome. I'm excited for that. Did you guys still have a good weekend? Did you go to any shows that weekend? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a great weekend and uh, he 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 really partied nicely and nice. uh, you know, did a lot of things. So so you know, everything happens for a reason. But it was really funny. I've never had anything this before and <laughs> we had so many laughs about it and uh I don't That's know if awesome. it was because I wasn't clear or we were just in a rush or how I got confused, but it was just when, when I got the text and like hotel information, I'm my uh, I started doubting myself. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm missing something. What am I missing? What's going on? <laughs> like, That's awesome. <laughs> Everything yeah. happens for a reason. I'm glad you guys yes, still yes. got to have that weekend. Cool. We had a great yeah. Time. So you guys will meet Julian now. Um, please join us in welcoming, welcoming him to the podcast. All right. We'll just jump right into to things today. Uh, you guys, we have Julian Prince here of SXM Festival. Um, we're really, really excited to talk about this event and cover it on the podcast. Um, just to give you some background, we started this podcast sort of to connect really hardcore festival fans with festival organizers and just sort of bridge that gap and talk a little bit about what actually goes on behind the scenes and how things are organized so that there's that more of that conversation happening. And so with SXM Festival, we definitely wanted to introduce more of the uh, North American audience to this event because we know you guys are doing some incredible things and it's a really magical setting and location for this event too so we're excited to chat with you today and welcome to the podcast thank you for having me you know now that i moved to miami and i'm realizing how close the island is from miami i'm like asking myself why isn't everybody in miami at the uh, sxm you know during the the festival we, we should definitely uh, change that um but yeah it's uh so nice to have you mm-hmm. you know you have um me and you have traveled to festivals together. We've been to Time Warp together. So, like, you know, we are very similar people in, in general. So I think you'll understand why we felt we wanted to do this podcast. And, you know, it's because people that work in the industry and uh, people that build festivals, it's a journey of a lifetime, literally. And Every time. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> and it's like you keep it keeps getting yeah exactly it keeps getting <clears throat> it, it keeps becoming a bigger thing to learn 
But, you know, how many years have you guys now had the festival? So, uh, the, the, you know, the, the plan started um, actually in January 2015. It was, um, uh, it was about 15 months to uh, the first edition, which uh, happened in March 2016. Right. And so, like, my point was that it's taken this many years to get it to the size that it is now. But I feel like the amount of work that goes into building the brand and creating the product for the audience you want to serve is just so significant. And what we've learned over pandemic, especially, is that a lot of young people are very ambitious and excited to do what we do for work, which is great. And I just got tired of replying to everyone with messages that seemed to be almost borderline negative because I was flagging to them, hey, don't expect this to be just a fun ride. You think that it is, it will take you a very long time to really get somewhere in this business and you will need to work really hard and you will have to be underpaid and I'm sorry that I'm just being so kind of almost <laughs> negative, but I want you to have the right expectations before you make the next step. Because ultimately, like in any other sector, you have to be intelligent, you have to hustle, and you have to constantly grow. So it's not any different. But you're, uh, talking, you're talking about characteristics of a human being, you know, but actually, you know, there's you got to learn to crawl before you walk, and then you have to learn to walk before you run. So I feel that you know in 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 any uh in any uh um uh, metier in english is uh in whatever you're gonna do later yeah, industry sector yeah industry you're gonna have to do that so you know totally but um, i i bet that you know doctors and lawyers don't get messages from random people saying <laughs> we want to we wanna do what you do but we get those and so instead of being Instead of, I, I called myself like I sound negative and I said the better way to do it is to invite friends that have been doing this their whole life and tell their story so it becomes apparent to the audience of how much work it really takes to get anywhere. And this is why we made the podcast and we've invited some friends that have achieved a lot through a very long time of hard work. And that's why we want to welcome you here and just... Uh, learn about you and your journey and you know the the history of the festival and the vision for the future no yeah, very good well i'm always happy to share and uh, um everything that i've ever uh, done in life i always felt like if i could like not ne not necessarily mentor but i'm always very happy to give some direction and to uh, and you know if 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 people want to do that and you're inspiring people to to actually get out of bed in the morning and, and do something out of their lives it's a, it's a, it's an honor and i'm humbled by it you know 100 i think yeah MJ people listening we're gonna clip all of that whole section because people i mean it's exciting right it's still an exciting industry to be in but obviously this whole past year and a half has given more challenges than ever before. And like you said, you're still learning and adapting to everything. You Nobody would have known how to deal with a pandemic now. So can you take us back though a little bit before? Because you said this was began in 2015. Like what were you doing before the festival? And then what brought you to SXM? Well, it's, it's been a very long journey to the festival. Um, even from the moment that the actual idea of doing the festival came up, it took me about 10 years to start putting it and materializing the, the idea so uh, it all started on, the <laughs> on, uh, on New Year's Eve, 1995, where uh, my sister brought me to a rave, you know, yeah. I would, uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, kind of was, I was really way too young to probably be in that kind of setting. I was just 13 years old, <laughs> you know. Oh man, yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> I was kind of like uh, forced to go with her by my parents. I don't know if that was a good idea, but uh, <laughs> it was what happened um my dad was like your sister wants to go to a rave he had no idea what it was because she's like you got to go with her i'm like uh what it's <laughs> like, third at night like i'm going to bed <laughs> i'm like, I'm like well, what time we're going back home when the when the sun comes up i'm like damn okay <laughs> so um so 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 you know went to the to the to the event actually i remember what i was wearing i was wearing like black short black black jeans and a doors t-shirt like nice. I was, I was, <laughs> you know listening to uh, that kind of music back then and then uh, and then just kind of like you know got there and just the, the vibe the adults at this point you know the ravers were wearing like that you know the 
you know, how ravers would, mm-hmm. you know, with, with the pacifiers and the lights and everything. Else. I'm like, okay, so this is a place where adults are still are still kids. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like good good techno, some 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 uh, uh, you know old school, you know. Tr- tribalish kind of break beats and like all, all sounds I've never ever heard in my life and and it was like break dancers and like all sorts of it was like a, a, a big circus and 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 when I got back to uh, the next morning I'm like that it was a really ex- ex- uh, exciting experience uh, later um, uh, my sister started buying me records um, after that a, a couple of years later in 1997 I, I worked all summer to buy myself a pair of turntables shortly after that I was in studios so I did the whole uh, artist uh, music thing and then later on started uh, promoting in clubs, throwing my own parties. After that, uh, um, in 2013, um, and also did a, a bunch of, uh, of uh, you know, warehouse parties and, you know, old school, uh, you know, you don't know where the party is going to be and then you, you get to, mm-hmm. get a, to get the address last minute. And then finally owned my own restaurants and nightclubs. Uh, and then, and then, uh, and then, so that's the, the, I would say the, the professional side of it. But, you know, early in the days in 2001, went to Ibiza and then uh, the WMCs was there every, every year. And then, you know, was uh, obviously there when, at the, when the BPM started and, and all these different things. So always been wow. kind of part of the industry and having, I think I, w- I was lucky to be at, at so many amazing uh, places at the right time, you know, for uh, mm. uh, whether it was Burning Man or, or, or I was just there at key moments. And I would say in terms of our, of our, our industry, like, you know, the Sag Bay parties as well. And all of that kind of like really inspired me to want it to be even more part of, of the industry. And, mm-hmm. and the festival is a bit of a, an inspiration of all those amazing moments. I was fortunate enough to, to live. Hey, I don't know if you said it. I mean, I know where it is, but did you say where this is, where you're from, where the ray was, what city? What, what do you mean? What? Where was it? What 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 the rave you went to? Where did you grow oh, up? Okay, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, the nineteen ninety five, the rave was called Smooth, and it was in Montreal at the Palais des Con- mm-hmm. Congress Center. Yeah, yeah, because I'm not sure if we've said that you are from Montreal. I think that that makes a difference mm-hmm. for context. Yeah, born and raised, you know, and and uh, and I have. I mean, I don't know how long this interview is, but I have so long to say about <laughs> Montreal and the rave and the parties and how amazing it was. I mean, we had a, an amazing club called Playground back then, you know, and that was like I'm, I'm talking like nine five. We had a proper after hour kind of jam wow. already uh, already in place and then the next thing you know stereo opens and sona is there and three or four more after hours so the city was very and we had once a month a really big rave you know the smooth the cream the this the that all of those all of those uh raves popping so electronically M- montreal was very vibrant it was kind of kind of easy to be a to, it was tough not to be one of my favorite cities mm-hmm. i used to when i was young i used to go to montreal all the time all the time, literally. Wow. And it really helped that it was 18 to party and drink, I think, and gamble. <laughs> so, you know, um, at That's some what point, I did we when doing, I was like 19. We drove to Montreal. We were doing, to we were doing bus trips, <laughs> yeah. you know, with New Yorkers to Montreal as like for yeah. work. You know, that was our thing, selling packages to Montreal. Montreal was the party city. Mm-hmm. And um, okay, so I think that draws a better picture. So you go to a rave in Montreal when you're 13 and you, 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 Here we are. you know, you, you start loving the music, you, you learn how to DJ, you go into the music thing, as you called it. And that leads to you being an organizer of events and, uh, launching uh, venues. And how do you then end up with a crazy idea of going to an Island and building a festival on the Island? Well, you know, I grew up also in the, in the hotel business. My father always owned hotels. Uh, the first hotel he owned was actually in Miami in the 80s. So we spent a lot of time over there. So we kind of grew up in, in hotels. And um, so my parents moved to St. Martin in 2003 uh, after uh, buying the Hommage Hotel. So you guys, you have, mm-hmm. you have been, right? So, um, so yeah. And, and so the first time, actually, it's, there's always a New Year's Eve party in my stories. <laughs> <I'm noticing. laughs> 
It's New Year's Eve, 2004. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally 10 years later. And I land to St. Martin for the first time. Time to go check it out. And I, I landed there around like 4 p.m. And my sister, my baby sister, Audrey's there. And she's like, dude, this place is sick. You gotta, I'm like, I'm like, I'm tired. I caught like the Montreal, New York, New York, St. Martin. And I've been up since like 4 a.m. And I'm like, Ugh, like I, I need to chill a couple hours. So she's like, okay, you chill a couple hours and tonight we're going to a party and um and and so that's i saw from the island i landed at the airport went to the hotel did some sort of a 10 minute ride checked out the hotel had a beer nap for two hours woke up and we uh, and we left to this party uh, right next to the airport's tarmac actually uh, it's mm -hmm. it called bliss back then <clears throat> mm -hmm. and it's literally like a beautiful venue sunset side of the island uh, right next to the tarmac, you know, you hear the planes landing, like it's really like 20 meters away from the tarmac, you know, on that, um, you know, everyone knows that, uh, that airport uh, landing strip of Maho, which is, you know, one of the most impressive in the world, because you're on the beach, 10 meters away, there's a, a huge plane uh, <laughs> so cool. uh, taking off. And it's an open air sky, uh, open, open, open sky. Oh, open sky a venue yeah venue and there's like a thousand people in there or so uh, like house music blasting and just uh, some guy on some guy on rollerblade right like going up the trust and like it was super wild and and we had an amazing night we had some champagne with the with the with the the, the 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 waves crushing on the rocks next to the club and i'm just like holy shit man like that's the spot and then i spent what a good two weeks there went around the island and i was just amazed by the size of it the layout of it and the amount of um, you know house music playing everywhere you know it's half french half dutch so you get like that mm -hmm. that already that that culture and and then i'm like wow i and, and all you know the beauty of it is so pristine and the water is so blue i mean it's really impressive when you when you're there and like okay so what do we got to do here put a couple speakers on a on a on a <laughs> beach and book a couple homies like wow what is this so um so it led me to so this is where the idea was born literally six hours after landing wow and, uh, and yeah so that was 2004 so couple of years go through and then I was actually I had met Craig Pettigrew in from BPM back then Craig Pettigrew right? one of the founders of BPM in Ibiza in 2001 after that trip I called Craig and uh, I told him listen man uh, I found a spot you know uh, uh, it's pretty amazing I think you know and, and he's like uh, and I have an idea to uh to, we should probably do a festival there. And he was like, hey, I had an idea too. Uh, I'm like, and, and a concept. We're looking for venues right now. I'm like, okay, what's the concept? He's like, okay, so, you know, um, it's called BPM. I'm like, beats per minute, no, bartenders, promoters, and music. Uh, a lot of the people we know in Toronto, actually, you know, after, uh, after New Year's Eve, they make so much money. And when, you know, promoting or working in the nightclubs and the DJs are kind of like having their biggest gig of the year. So they're looking for vacation. So we're trying, we're looking for a spot to bring everybody together. I'm like, well, amazing. You should go check it out. So he went there and coming back from the trip, he's like, oh, Julian, you know, St. Martin is amazing. It's beautiful. But, you know, I'm not sure about like locally, how many people would actually attend. And if we don't have that, that the local uh, mm -hmm. kind of like you know the local bodies i'm not sure how you know how, how, how big we can grow so i'm like he's like well i i there's another uh, uh there's another spot i found in cancun and so on and then next thing uh, next thing you know well everyone knows the story by now you know so i was like okay well you know so the idea kind of um, kind of dissipated a bit because at that time people weren't really traveling so much for events. So it made it for sure that it, it would have probably BPM would have probably not become as huge as shit as, as it, as it is today, if it hadn't started in Cancun when there's like 150 flights a day from everywhere. And mm -hmm. that there's a lot of people as well uh, locally to come uh, to attend. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a really good business decision on their end. But for me, it was just like, kind of, okay, let's put it back on the ice and it'll come back later, you know? So um, next thing you know, um, uh, Coachella starts popping. And that was kind of a, that was kind of one the one thing that started uh, um, ringing the bells for me. I'm like, okay, Coachella now is people are traveling for a music event, and then Bonnaroo came up, and then all those little festivals started emerging as a destination kind of situation. Mm -hmm. 
And then Burning Man was another was another big inspiration because you know um, it, it was really be becoming a, 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 another event that people would travel a lot. So, and BPM was already growing to a point actually in 2000. Uh, you know, it was it started 2007, I think. So, you know, 10 years later, around 2014, I started thinking I should probably bring that project back on the ice, you know, from, from the dead and <laughs> bring it back. Because I think that people now are probably, probably ready for a, an island experience, which is, I know, uh, you know, Playa del Carmen is, is, is tropical, but it's still not an island, which is mm -hmm. you know, a, a different vibe. And, uh, and yeah, I just thought it'd be, it'd be nice to be, uh, to have that diversity. There was definitely a place in the global calendar for it and, and, and in March and, and yeah, so, so that's, uh, so that's it. A lot of uh, all these things, but yeah, that's it. Was it, was it the perfect time you felt like, cause in 2015, yeah. Like how did that all come together? How was the first year? The first, the first year of organizing was, 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 uh, was, was crazy. Uh, <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. You, have, you, you know, you can say you've done everything in your life, you know, that has to do with a festival, but you have not done a festival. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it was, uh, it was excruciating pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was really difficult. Just finding all the right people as well to, to, yeah. to, to express that vision uh to uh to be able to uh, you know how do you promote a party that never happened in a place that there was never a party before mm -hmm. but, well you know you need to have some credibility as an organizer as well to be able to sell the tickets and get the, and get people's uh trust you know so there was uh, 2015 uh, was a lot of campaigning Mm -hmm. I went to, uh, you know, ADE, this, that, everywhere and met a lot of people I hadn't connect with in, for a couple of years because I, from 2013 to 2015, I, I opened like two restaurants and a nightclub. So mm -hmm. I stopped really going to, to a lot of the events to, to be able to, to, uh, to work on a couple, um, a couple projects like that, which was mm -hmm. ended up being great because that experience in food and beverage made the festival's food and beverage experience super better super yeah super nice yep. so um so it was really good as well experience for the festival again but it was not not a festival i mean you're working in saint martin there's two governments there's two kind of powers uh mm -hmm. there's one road <laughs> right <laughs> so there's a lot of logistics challenges and and as well as you know artists and agent want to make sure that they're going to be put in a, in a favorable position and in and, and, and the right way so we had to do a we had to work um a lot of, on that as well to be able to get mm -hmm. like in lineup which uh, we were super proud of for our first year mm -hmm. but also to be able to deliver the party on the beach all ran uh, with generators with no power no bathroom so we had to we basically had to do everything ourselves and wow. also to be able to express that uh, sustainability kind of you know uh, seed we built all the stage with recycled materials and stuff we found at the dump or uh, at the port so it was a it was a big challenge to put this together but we're uh, if you've seen or been um, mm -hmm. to the festival or seen the pictures or videos from the first year I mean at the last hour uh, two hours of the festival I, I finally everything was working fine because we had so many challenges our first year. I, uh, I I told myself, shit, I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> <laughs> just just for context, uh, because I think I'll tell a full story if you are if if you want to share it. Um, how many people showed up in the first edition? It was about two hundred, two thousand and two hundred. Wow, that's, that's a lot of people for the first edition. Holy shit. Yeah, it was good. And 95% and people flying from, and this is what's beautiful about this festival. Literally, it's people flying from, I don't know, 60, 70 different cities in the world. Wow. And it's crazy how people are, are very alike and they come from very different places. It calls really a, a type of person. I'm not talking about age because the, the age uh, variance is pretty big. We sell most of our tickets between 25 and 45, you know, but a very, and a little bit, you know, 18 to 25 and a little bit over 45, but uh, it, like, I mean, there's a 20, there's a 20 year gap between, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the festival goers, but it's like really a lot of uh, mind alike people. Uh, and it's beautiful to see how those connections were, uh, were coming through. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably one of the best, the, one of the things I've always loved to do with you. If what, it's like, what's your passion, Julian? Like, you know, besides music, I would say it's connecting people together. 
That's so cool. And the one you. thing you haven't mentioned about St. Martin yet uh, is food. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get to this, Michael. <laughs> no. You know what's on my mind all the time. It's like you go there and it's like, especially if it's during the season, it's like fresh seafood, like super fresh everything. And, and then, you know, um, infusion of the European cuisine is like you never want to leave the island period so mm -hmm. 2200 people is a lot man for the first edition i mean i i have friends who do festival on the islands and i mean their first year is like 400 500 600 no i, I haven't heard 2200 so this was 2015 15. that was 2016 march 15. 2016 yeah wow absolutely but yeah like you you just mentioned man like seriously the island is really what like what's this why the festival is you know grew so fast is because of the island unmistakably you know there's so much to do you know whether you're going to go deep sea fishing or uh eat in like an amazing restaurant have like you know french uh, you know a super high-end meal on uh, with your feet in the sand you know you don't find that at many destinations in the caribbean that kind of like all, that, all of that while mm -hmm. playing poker Oh, right. uh, yeah, and then you have the casinos on one side, the night <laughs> crazy, you know, the, the the inventory of villas is insane. Mm. Yeah. yeah, can you talk about this for somebody who is not familiar or hasn't experienced it? Like from the get-go, I know you have all different types of beach, like jungle, the villa parties, boat parties. Was it that way from the very first event you did? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, you know, the idea behind the festival was also to you know, change a bit the, I would say the um, islands. Um, uh, perception? Up. No, no, yeah, perception, but image online. Because when you yeah, Google things back then, you would probably find some old like uh, uh, umbrellas with like a, mm -hmm. a six pack of Miller Lite on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a very busy beach. But that was so not what St. Martin was. Had, was. And, you know, there was not really a lot of work marketing wise done by the island and really expressing like what, what is St. Martin. And, and so mm -hmm. we wanted to find that and put like, you know, people having fun, uh, you know, uh, on the beach and doing activities and all these things. So the idea was to showcase the island as well, because we definitely thought that, you know, in a world where you know there's so many parties and so many DJs and so many, uh, what's what what differentiates? What's why would people mm -hmm. come to us? You know, well, and the setting is what makes the whole difference. I mean, you know, when we're yeah. in Happy Bay, we're literally have 16 acres, a half in the jungle and like 600 meters of, of golden sand beach to ourselves. And, you know, we could fit 10,000 people there, but we're half of this. And it's like mm -hmm. sort of that intimate kind of vibes. And we also production wise have like, you know, put a lot of energy in making it like super eye candy and, 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 and as well using materials literally lying on the ground. Uh, you know, I asked my master builder, okay, so what's the budget for the beach stage? And he's like, uh, 500 bucks. I'm like, what? He's yeah. like, look at all the wood line from the hurricane, man. I'm going to do something crazy with it. I need, I need, I need some, um, some, uh, the, uh, screws, uh, glue and, and nails. I'm That's like, so cool. You know? And, and yeah. And, and things like that but you know when you um sometimes it's not just about you know the the, the creativity aspect of it is, is is what's really fun and you know but you don't need to do much again in in, in such a setting for those mm -hmm. who see pictures or videos it's like it's, it's just crazy i've never seen uh, i mean i there's i mean i don't know much other places with such beautiful venues mm -hmm. Oh, that's so picturesque. Just looking at your website and saying, I, I cannot wait to go. It just absolutely, what well, could be more of a dream? I mean, you have incredible music there, amazing food, and then people can stay kind of wherever, right? Because there's different locations they can hop around to. You know, having usually in a festival, you would, you would kind of be like, okay, so here's the package one, two, three, and the mm -hmm. people are coming from 60 different cities and there's like Airbnbs, villas, hotels, studios. I think it's, it's, it brings in a bit more of a mature crowd because you have to do your due diligence before your trip. Although mm -hmm. we try to give you as much information we can on the website, like, you know, people have to go and, okay, so what's my route? How do I get there? We can't say this to everyone because it's different for so many people mm -hmm. that you have to. Uh, and I think that every good trip comes with a bit of planification as well. If you're going to discover a new, a new, a new country, you want to probably get a couple minutes to learn about the local culture and to see and mm -hmm. to get the information on what's to do there and what just kind of like, 
you know, if you're into kite surfing, it's there. If you're into uh, um, uh, fishing, you can go deep sea fishing, the best activity ever. And then you can also uh, go snorkeling. Or if you have your certification, there's some of the world's best diving there. So, I mean, you can design your trip as you wish. Yeah, and 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 yeah, there's just so much to do, especially if you're a foodie. Yeah? <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's it, it, honestly, I've been to Saint Martin for the past almost 20 years now, and really often, and there was never a trip that was the same. There's always wow. something to do. So, any favorite, like any hidden gems or places you definitely recommend people going to? Yeah, uh, well, in terms of food, uh, when you're there next time, MJ, yep. uh, take you to Villa Ibiscus. It's it's a it's a it's a restaurant made in a villa. They have about 30 seats. You have to reserve in advance. Really tough to get a table. Mm -hmm. I'm very hungry though. I'm <laughs> and for um, lunch, yeah, it's, it's no, no, go, go. that part out, but I'm gonna make you water if uh if I <laughs> you don't have to edit it out. I, everybody knows I'm a fatty. <laughs> uh, and then you know, here comes the lineup. So this is I think what really stands out. Your lineups are pretty incredibly curated. I was always wondering how the hell does he get all these artists to come to St. Martin all together? You know, I would assume for the festival size that you have, usually that would be an extremely unaffordable lineup. So that means, or that meant, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I hate assuming, but my assumption was that the artists want to play it. And that is why you are able to have all of them because they're making the fees affordable and so that was one of the like signs for me like this must be a really really fun experience because the artists usually don't want to come back and play for smaller fees if they're not really into it themselves you know yeah for sure well for sure the fact that you know the the, the festivals uh, you know stroke some attention really really fast you know but i think that the one thing you can do to attract uh, artists is to put them in the perfect setting to perform. And, you know, since we all, practically everyone in the organization have been oh, <laughs> DJing or made music, honestly. So we're all familiar with the stage. And and uh, one of the big things we wanted to do is make sure they're like uber comfortable and inspired and taken care of and and felt free to and, and, and enchanted by, you know, the setting so that they would actually be... Um, Mm -hmm. to come and play but also you know when 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 you when people hear the term festival they envision this massive thing with like a thousand people with metal barriers to make sure that everyone's okay with a couple bouncers in front to make sure no one jumps on the stage like in saint martin like you can jump on the stage like obviously i don't recommend it <laughs> i actually did it a couple of years ago he, he went on the stage got naked and jumped on ame <laughs> know how to react but um, my point is that you know it's 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 like the size of it is, is, is it's not like it's still an intimate festival since we have big grounds you know we're like about five thousand people on 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 the divided in two stages on in happy bay and and at the villa you know the villa party is huge we do about a thousand people we could put two thousand there but like we always kind of try to keep it in a way where you can breathe and, and it's outdoors as well so i feel that with the covid era it's yeah. kind of a kind of a good festival to 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 look at because of the fact that you know it's possible to do some uh, some social distancing and it's like you know it's 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 it's, it's still it's still an intimate festival it's still i know it looks it looks big in, 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 in a lot of ways because we do have all the components that big festival has. We have um, the RFID system with the cashless pay. We have, you know, really important production uh, with the, you know, every projector mapping, uh, visual interactive arts and, 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 and art installations and all of that. But, but still it is, it is a festival that, uh, that is still intimate. So, mm -hmm. When you, you, when you, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but when you make an offer, I mean, you, you, you got to go with, with the amount of tickets you're selling as well. You know, if you're doing a 50,000 people festival, well, the DJ gets, gets a bigger paycheck because you're making more money. Mm -hmm. And at the end, us, we're, we're still a small festival. So we're able to, uh, to have the, 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 the industry understand that and to, and to support, support it, support the event. 
It just sounds incredible. I'm sold. I feel like anybody <laughs> listening right now, like it just, it sounds absolutely incredible. I think you said too, with the range of age too, it's probably attracts a little bit more of a mature crowd or people who are there to have a combination of a vacation with incredible music and this experience all over the Island. And what's the response been like from the, the local community as well? Cause I'm sure it's, it brings a ton of people to the Island for those few days. Well, you know, there, there's a, uh... When you live in the Caribbean, you're probably not on Facebook as much as, as when you live in the city. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. uh, the locals there have a very nice life. Uh, it's always beautiful outside. It's, it's the pace of the island on its daily basis is very chill. People are very chill. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think that for an economy that lives basically on tourism, um, it was really well received. But um, I, and you know we're we're encouraging and hiring a lot of people locally. Mm-hmm. So I mean, when you're when you're actually uh, participating in the community, as well as you know employing the community and working with the community, you're part of the community, and for and people are are are, are, are you know happy. And every year there's more local people who come and check out the festival, and mm-hmm. and, and and it gains also popularity because you know for for people. Um, and, you know, their music is, is 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 not necessarily electronic music you know they right. most of the locals what they what they used to what they what they listen to is like reggae soca and, uh, and those Carib- caribbean caribbean music mm-hmm. but, uh, they love everyone loves to dance so uh, you know once they come check it out they're they're if they're not working because the week of the festival, there's such an influx of, mm-hmm. of person that I, I actually have a prediction mm-hmm. to make so we're gonna cut this piece out Right. If it comes true and not tell anyone if it doesn't. <laughs> I actually think that that music is about to marry electronic music in a way you've never imagined. I think that the Latin music mm-hmm. that you've just described, or a lot of those genres, a lot of some producers that are very, uh, you know, on a, on a premium level. We are now working with electronic music producers or learning how to produce electronic music. And very soon you'll have a flavor of electronic and house dance music that also has a lot of this infusion from Central America, from South America, you know, and I think that's going to also help you transform the festival a bit because I think the locals will relate to it even more than they do now and, you know, People from the other islands will start coming in as well. I think more. We do. We do have about that's that's the thing. Uh, you know, uh, about thirty percent of, of of our tickets is actually people from surrounding islands, from the Caribbean. So mm-hmm. that that's been super interesting as well to to uh, to 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 have the, that crowd mixed with the American, Canadian, or European, and and also a lot of Mexicans come to the festival, which is cool. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice melting pot of uh, of. Uh, of 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 diversity international Mm -hmm. international. it makes it super super fun well it's an international festival it's a Mm -hmm. it's an island in the middle of caribbean that's split between two european countries right it's meant to be international Mm -hmm. yeah and also what's what 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 the festival i guess proven to uh, saint martin and saint martin is that this island can host international uh, events now that this uh, opened the doors to uh, a lot of possibility because uh, mm-hmm. the island hadn't had uh, you know an international event before so right so yeah so i think that it's giving a good spotlight on the destination for that as well very cool and how are things uh going for 2022 well, you know, a lot of things have been done already because we we were still kind of organizing 2021 as if it was happening, mm-hmm. just to keep the teams going and to get some uh, a bit ahead of a start. So, uh, you know, a lot of the groundwork's been done, but every year things change so much, you know, that, you know, it's going to be a, a, every year is a new year in the festival world, you know, so... Mm-hmm. So things are things are good, advancing as usual, and uh, and yeah, we're launching the dates tomorrow, and uh, and then uh, phase one should be coming in September, and and again, and you know the, the the saga continues. Awesome, that's so exciting. Well, I think this will probably be out either 
this week or next week. So we're excited just to hype everything up. And yeah, if people want even more information on the event or where to stay or what the experience is like, they can definitely go to your website to check it out. But anywhere else, anything else you want to plug? Well, I, I think that, you know, uh, Googling the island, Googling, uh, reading the Wikipedia, you know, sometimes gets you to get you understanding the grounds a bit better in the history and, 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 you know, where you're going and, and, but, you know, we've been putting a lot of efforts into centralizing most of that, uh, information on on our website Mm -hmm. as well as you know probably uh, checking out uh, you know our our social media as well you know we can see some cool content and some information that you know we're just popping out uh, here and there as we go very cool mj any other questions any surprises (laughs) anything in you know you're planning in the future that has something worth uh sneak peeking Mm-hmm. I think peaking uh, adventures. Well, you know, well, we always have something. Well, of course. Well, you know, the pandemic was quite in- interesting because what things, everything got down to zero, literally. Like I'm used to have re- to receive like 30, 40, 50 emails sometimes a day and to probably getting none. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that was quite the adjustment to start with. Like, Tech, fren- frenetically looking at my phone and my computer thinking something's going to come up, you know, but uh, so there was a little uh, time that were like, okay, so how long is this going to take? What are we going to do? And, and, you know, what's the situation here to, okay, now that we have time, uh, let's, instead of just waiting for the action to come to us, let's try to build some, some opportunities. So we started planning a lot in the future and it's been in the plan to export the brand for a couple of years now, we've had a couple of setbacks with the hurricane and and and, and COVID for sure. But we've uh, we've been uh, in contact with a couple of new destinations and in, in completely different markets uh, to be able to nice. festival because the festival has been built in a way uh, that it fits in like four containers. Uh, you know, even the main stage it's huge, but it really folds into uh, into not even a twenty footer. So uh, and we own all, all of the production and all of the gear as well. So the idea was has always been since the beginning to be a nomadic festival so yeah i think that if if the world gets back to normal you'll see us in in, in somewhere else in the world not just in north ever in north america so. very cool i'm excited to see where it pops up that's but big that's yeah, big. okay yeah that's really exciting i think more and more people we've mj and i have talked about this i think now that you have you didn't have the opportunity to travel or do anything i think so many more people are just looking to get away and have new experiences and they've maybe done some of the big events multiple times in the united states but it's like okay what else is out there what can i go explore and check out and this is a completely different experience from that like you said so i'm really looking forward i'm hoping to be there in 2022 i'm excited I hope, I hope <laughs> be part of the tradition and yep. the tra- uh, every year Love it. Thank you so much for your time today. We really, really appreciate it. That was amazing, bro. Congratulations and, you know, best of luck to the next edition. I know you're going to rock it. No, thank you so much for, uh, you know, taking a, a little interest in what we do. It's, uh, it's not Well, a- you do listen, you know, the, it's the festival like yours that are really building up the culture of, you know, tourism for festival people, for, for you know, dance music fans. And, and that's something that's so near and dear to us and we've been finding ways to contribute to this you know culture of 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 really expanding the boundaries of how far will people travel to the festivals and we know that people from north and south america and other regions they do go to europe because of amazing festivals there but it's so nice to have festivals here in north america where people from europe come back for and i think that's the one part we're all working on and let's stay in touch and continue working together and you know we, we got a lot of love for you as you know well the love is uh coming right back at you my friend <laughs> guys thank you nice meeting you bye all right. righty you guys i'm so looking forward to seeing what they do with the event next year um we didn't talk about this earlier we were saying it off camera but i went to saint martin for the first time this past march and i feel like there's just something about it when you finally get to go there. Like he said, it's just the most beautiful beaches experience. The people could not be nicer, amazing places to stay, incredible food, like all around incredible experience. So to combine that with a really amazing house lineup, like if you guys are into this type of music, even if you're not, I feel like you would absolutely love this experience. So 
really excited to hear about like how all of that came together and and he seems awesome he is and um, exciting to hear that there might be an sxm in, in on a different island or a different location mm-hmm. but yeah great to hear his story and really nice to see how young everyone starts i mean I'm, i was not 13 when i started probably like 17 but mm-hmm. uh still you know obviously a journey of a lifetime and again just shows to everyone hey after all these years you know uh, all these years have passed and he's just getting started right the festival mm-hmm. is just getting bigger so it's like forever young crew we wish him best of luck and we'll definitely find a way to be on St. Martin at least a little bit for the next edition and hopefully we'll see everyone else there mm-hmm. and then um, you know I got one request same request as always let us know if you like the episode let us know who the next guest should be we're doing this for you not for us so we want to make sure that we invite the guests that you guys want to hear and really appreciate all the love support care messages thanks for staying engaged and uh, see you soon Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, like MJ said, you can give us feedback at Festival Insider, um, Instagram, Twitter, on Facebook. Um, And if you want to watch, we're on YouTube as well. So you guys can check out the videos. But thank you all for the support. And we'll be back with another episode soon. Bye, guys. Hey, Insiders. Thanks for watching this video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel or feel free to check out our recommended videos. Thanks for watching.